Welcome! This is our worship video for the fourth Sunday in Advent, Sunday, December 20th. Uh, we will be having a Christmas Eve pre-recorded service here available um, on the 24th. Uh, we are still looking for people to help record pieces of that. There's still time uh, for you to make an appointment and come into the office and do so. Uh, we're looking for singers uh, to be part of our virtual hymns and uh, people to read parts of the scripture um, and other pieces of worship. So please uh, reach out. It is easy um, and it makes such a difference to have you as part of our worship. A special thanks today to the groups who provided hymns for our worship this week and those in our parish who came in to record pieces of our worship. We begin today with our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Join me in our prayer for the fourth Sunday in Advent. We praise you, O God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, Open our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace that we may sing of your advent among us in the word made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O branch of Jesse, free your own from Satan's tears. From depths of hell your people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Come, 
O cornerstone that binds in one, refresh the hearts that long for you. Restore the broken, make us new. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the sign of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Together, let us humbly and honestly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> reading is from 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. 
Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among the old people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be distributed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appoint judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Our gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, here's the plan. I have been known to say this more than once to my family. Uh, the problem is, it never really pans out the way I've planned. Not because I'm bad at planning, exactly, but because something always happens. And I'm one of those people I try to think through all the different things that could happen. Uh, but inevitably, something comes up and we have to improvise. And I feel like I can do that pretty well. It's the true fly by the seat of your pants, no plan to begin with, no foreknowledge way of living that stresses me out. Give me a plan A and I don't care if it looks like plan Q by the time we're done. There was still a plan. Plans are so helpful. They guide us, they give us a goal, a future to work towards. Sometimes they're short plans, sometimes they're long-range plans. God has plans, too. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with a hope. It's a beautiful line, all on its own. That piece of scripture is so comforting to so many. But I think it's even more beautiful when we know that it was spoken to a people in exile, a people without hope and without what seemed like a future or a plan. And still we make plans. 
and God has plans. And it turns out that, of course, the people in the Bible had plans, too. We have uh, two readings today, as always. In our first reading, uh, we have King David, the shepherd boy. He's turned into a king, and he's finally having a time of peace. Things are settled. He is settled. So they've been doing a lot of wandering and battling and trying to establish a kingdom, but now King David has done this. There is a kingdom. He is the king, and now it's time to get down to the business of ruling. And so every good kingdom needs a castle, right? So David may not have a castle, but he does have a house, a nice building. And he looks around one day and he realizes that God doesn't have anything like this. Just the tabernacle. The tabernacle was basically a tent. It was a tent that housed the important things for worship. The tabernacle is the place that God could be found was promised to be found always. And so David's pretty sure that now that they're settled, God's going to need something better than a tent. Because after all, this is God, the Almighty. But God disagrees. God basically says, I haven't asked you for a house yet. Why do I need a house? Don't worry about it. And then the part of the story that I think is the best. But in order to know that it's the best part, you have to know just a tiny bit of Hebrew. See, the word bayet means house, but it also means temple, and it also means lineage or dynasty. So King David says, I'm going to build you a house. I'm going to build you a bayet, a temple. God says, how about I build you a bayet, a dynasty? How about instead of your legacy being made of stone, it's made of people? I will make sure that one of your descendants is always on the throne. Talk about throwing plan A off the rails, right? David just wanted to build God a house, and now the plan is to build him an entire lineage. But that's the kind of thing that God's all about. David had this whole grand idea of what he thought God wanted. But David's plans aren't God's plans. We can't limit God's imagination and work in the world. This carries us into our gospel reading for today. It makes no sense to have these women, these two women who we heard about last week. This is just before that reading. So we have a virgin, Mary, and we have an old woman who was thought to be barren, Elizabeth. You know that it's odd that it doesn't quite make sense because Mary doesn't just go along with it right away. You know, we kind of think she does. But really, there's a whole conversation before she agrees to the plan. How can this be? Are the first words out of her mouth. Which, again, we've made to sound so sweet and innocent. How can this be? But I imagine it was probably something more along the lines of, you're kidding, right? This is impossible. And you clearly can't use me for the plan. I'm a virgin. How is this even going to work? And yet again, with Mary and Elizabeth, we see that God's plans are not our plans. God's work cannot be limited to only what we imagine is possible. Sometimes people wonder why we've kept scriptures around for so long, or 
even why they started to be saved in the first place. But we believe that God keeps promises. That's why the scriptures have stuck around. So even when it looks bleak, in the midst of exile, or tyranny and oppression, or pandemics, we hold on to the fact that God keeps promises. And the biggest one is a promise to love us. From creation to the exodus in Egypt to the wandering in the desert, through kings and exile and destruction and occupation and persecution, in any trial of the world, God has promised to be there and has shown up time and time again. This is the final week of Advent, the last Sunday. We are, theoretically, fully prepped for God's promise to us, God's unexpected way of keeping a promise. On Christmas Eve, we'll hear the birth story with angels and crowded cities and shepherds with a message of peace and hope for all the world. What God is doing is new, but it's always linked to what God has done in the past. And so we live into the new and into the future and into uncertain plans, but we know what has already happened. And so we can look back on all of it and trust in the future. God promised David a kingdom, a house, and a lineage. God kept that promise through Jesus. And we live into that promise and speak the words of Mary. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen. I invite you to join in a brief time of prayers of intercession followed by the Lord's Prayer. 
If you feel so moved, the response to each petition will be, Your mercy is great. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faith. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend to them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the power and powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing as you go out into the world, taking the gospel message with you. The Creator of the stars bless your Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.